June 29th will, of course, be a very interesting UFC event. UFC 303 main event. Alex Pereira versus Hiri Prohaska. Hmm, that's a little familiar. It, of course, is the rematch between them. Now, of course, the card was supposed to be headlined by Conor McGregor versus Michael Chandler, but um, Conor McGregor got an owie, and uh, he can't compete no more. But they did, and also uh, Jamal Hill also pulled out as well because of an injury. Turns out um, his Achilles probably did not heal properly, so yeah. Finding at UFC 300, probably a little mistake, but hey, hindsight 2020. Anywho, now um, the event has basically just been completely changed. Now in the co-main event is Brian Ortega versus Diego Lopez. Very interesting. Anthony Smith versus Carlos Olberg. Interesting. And of course, um, we don't talk about the other one. And um, Ian Gary versus Michael Venom Page. Pretty good sacked card, of course. It is a little bit more stacked than what it was before. Of course, Ian Gary versus Michael Venom Page, well, of course, was there beforehand. It wasn't added, but it is a very nice addition. For some reason, it's below Anthony Smith and Bruno Silva, so, you know, whatever. But anyway, let's talk about that first. Michael Venom Page is, of course, 22-2 with 13 wins by way of knockout, three submissions, and six decisions. Obviously, some pop. He has one loss by way of knockout and one loss by way of decision. Of course, he lost to Douglas Lima in an absolute goddamn slap. That dude, that dude got slumped. But he did avenge it via split decision. So not too great of a, you know, avenge situation. But hey, it, it wins a win. Then he lost to Logan Storley via split decision. So um, I guess it got back to him. But anywho, he is coming off of a unanimous decision ass whooping against Kevin Holland. Goddamn, Kevin Holland, I expected you to win, man. You lost my, I lost my imaginary bet, man. My money's gone. But anywho, you'll be taking on the undefeated Ian, the future Gary. I don't know why his name is the future, but we'll go with it. He is 14-0 with seven wins by way of knockout, one submission, and six decisions. Now, of course, he is slightly more of a stoppage artist at 57%, but hey, it doesn't matter. He is coming off of his split decision win over Jeff Neal, I just figured out how his pronounce his name is Jeff. I, I I don't know how that spells Jeff, but hey, uh, that's what he wants to be called. That's what he wants to be called. In a very interesting fight, of course, it was a three round fight. Neal did kind of win a round. I, I would give him one round, but enough for a split decision. I like Jeff Neal, but no, he did not win any. He did not. He shouldn't have won one one decision. He probably should have lost unanimous, but whatever. Who do I got winning? This is a very interesting one. No, it's not. Ian Gary is going to slump Michael Page. I'm sorry. Michael Page is 37. He beat Kevin Holland via very unorthodox tactics, but come on. Ian Gary, he, he's coming off of a better win. Really enough, he did lose to Kevin Holland, but that was back in 2017, back when people were all like, Kevin Holland's going to be a future three-division world champion. But whatever. Yeah, Ian Gary's going to stop Michael Venom Page, just be honest. He's going to do some dumb shit, and he's going to get tripped again. He's going to get knocked out just like he got knocked out against Lima. Let's be honest. I'm, look, Ian Gary is very good at what he does. He picks and pokes at you, and if you crumble, you crumble, but he won't force a stoppage. Michael Venom Page will unfortunately fight at a distance. He's, he's not going to be a close-range fighter, which means it'll most likely suit Gary more. And, of course, everyone's saying Michael Venom Page is going to slump Ian Gary. Yes, I get it. People don't like Ian Gary because he's a vegetarian or something. Whatever. I mean, if he wants to eat lettuce, let him eat lettuce. Well, I don't know why y'all hate him for that. Let him eat lettuce. But, anywho, yeah, Ian Gary's most likely going to stop him in the second round. And uh, maybe get a, um, I don't know, Shafkar Rahmanov, um, was it JMD fight or something? I, that'd, pretty, that, that'd be pretty good for him. But, anywho... We're going to skip the Anthony Smith versus Carlos Olberg fight. I am sorry, Anthony Smith. But um, Olberg is most likely probably going to win. Probably. Unless he jumps into a guillotine, which, hey, you never know. But anywho, Brian T-City Ortega will be taking on Diego, no nickname, Lopez. Who is 24-6 with 10 wins by way of knockout, 12 submissions, and 2 decisions. He has two losses by way of knockout and the rest by decision, four of them. Of course, people are saying he is the future, kind of. He did um, lose to Moz Mozar Elvov via unanimous decision. 
And he lost back to back again. And then he lost a couple times. He lost quite a bit of times. Six losses. Of course, he only two have ever gone to the decision with him and uh, lost, which is probably not a good thing to say. <laughs> he lost more decisions than he won. So, hey, if Brian Ortega can make a go decision, he's probably going to win. Anyway, Brian T. City Ortega is 16 and 3. With three wins by way of knockout. Woo! Eight submissions and five decisions. Obviously, a stoppage artist more in the submission side, but hey, decisions are good as well. Three losses, two by way of knockout, and one by decision. One no contest, and that no contest comes all the way to um, uh, 2014. So yeah. Of course, his three losses are more recently. He lost to Max Holloway via stoppage. He lost to Alexander Volkanovsky via unanimous decision. And he lost to Yair Rodriguez via shoulder injury. So take that with a grain of salt. I don't even know why some dude's like knee pops and they're like, oh, the other guy knocked him out. No, he didn't. He just, dude just stepped on it weird. How is, why did he lose by stoppage? So dumb. And of course, it is dumb because he later submitted Yair Rodriguez two years later in the third round. It was very easy too, kind of. He kind of got whooped in the first round. Second round, you know, getting a little nice, and then um, submitted him like within the like the, the third round, he just got him. He's like, whoop! He was like, ah, oh, goddamn it, and he got submitted. So yeah, but of course he will be facing a very tough, challenging up and comer. Dude's twenty nine. Dude's old. A twenty and twenty nine year old prospect. This dude's a what? That's not really prospect anymore. That's a contender. But anyway, so what I got winning? It's gonna be Brian Ortega. Let's be honest. In a way, Lopez is going to try to submit Ortega. And don't get me wrong. You say, oh, he can stop him on the feet. Yeah, 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 you're going to try to do the same thing against a Brian Ortega who rolled his ankle. Like, yeah, you could try to knock out Brian Ortega, but he's a little too um, built for that. He took an ass whooping in the first round and just came back like it was nothing and submitted him. Brian Ortega most likely going to win probably by submission, third round. Because don't get me wrong, Diego Lopez definitely has that pop, kind of, and that submission threat. But, like... Brian Ortega? It's not like Brian Ortega's old either. He's 33. And he beat a pretty good opponent. People are like, oh, but he doesn't have no, um, I don't know, defense of submissions and all stuff. I mean, he has pretty nice submission wins himself. Yeah, Brian Ortega's going to submit Diego Lopez via third round twister and wet willy. But anywho, Diego Lopez, the whole, oh, he's the future. Nah, it's going to be ended. It's going to be ended. Done. And of course, the main event, the rematch, um, pretty much... Last minute, too, because, like, the fight's in, like, two weeks or even less time at this point. So, of course, everyone knows who these guys are. Hiri Prohaska, nicknamed BJP. Don't know why. Badass Hiri Prohaska. That's probably what it stands for. Is 30-4 and four with 26 wins by way of knockout, three submissions, and one decision. And uh, four losses, three by knockout and one by submission. So, yeah. This dude, he, once again, if you go decision with him, you'll most, you'll most likely win. I mean, you don't really need to since he lost all of them by decision. I mean, he lost all of them via stoppage. Of course, his last loss was, of course, to Alex Pereira in the second round. Before that, he lost back in 2015, 2013, and 2012. Obviously, quite a bit of times. Of course, he is coming off of a second round TKO win against Alexander Rakic back in UFC 300. Of course, it's very interesting because both of them are coming off of UFC 300 and both of them will be fighting each other once again. So who will it benefit more? We'll talk about that later. Of course, you have Alex Poetan Pereira and his record is 10 wins and 2 losses. 8 wins by way of knockout, 0 submission wins, goddamn, and 2 decisions. And he lost both of them via stoppage. 1 by knockout and 1 by submission. His first one was his first ever MMA fight and he lost via rare naked choke in the third round, which is not that bad. Then he lost to Israel Adesanya via absolute KO. Still a very bad KO. Ooh. And he came back like it was nothing. I don't even This was something else. This was 36 and you're out here acting like a 26-year-old. Come on. Of course, he is coming off of a first-round stoppage win over Jamal Hill. And people are like, hey, Benny, didn't you pick him to win? Yes, and uh, I want to see the rematch. People are like, oh, but it didn't matter that, that, that they separated him. Yes, but actually, it kind of does. I have evidence now. Josh Taylor versus Jack Catterall 2 back in boxing. They fought. 11th and 12th round were the round Josh Taylor needed a win. I thought he was up and he was so cruising to a win. He was getting back into the groove. Jack Catterall was gassed out. Nope, they separated them because they were like wrestling or something. 
Within like the first second after the separation, he gets clipped with something he should not have been clipped with, but he tried to force the pace once again and, and got hurt, lost round 11 and 12, and then lost the fight. Same thing here. Same thing happened here. Jamal Hill, Pereira got caught up in something, hit him in his giblets, tell him, no, we're good. And then, uh, boom, just threw a punch. I want to see a rematch. I think it might end a little bit differently. Will Pereira still win? Probably. But you never know. Maybe no hitting people in the giblets anymore. But anyway, who do I think is going to win? <sighs> so weird. People are like, I want to see the rematch. But like people are like, no. Uncle Liev should have got the title shot. And to be honest, I agree with them. Because here, Prohaska lost in the second round. It's not like this who lasted super long with this guy. But he did have a good game plan, which was the same game plan as Jan Blachowicz. Mix your striking with your grappling. And he did do that. And it worked, kind of. Up until, well, he got caught bum rushing and got caught. So the way here Prohaska is going to win is just like the last time. Mix in your striking, mix in your grappling, but don't forget your grappling. I think he forgot it. Like halfway through the fight, he realized, oh, I'm catching this dude. I'm going to try to stop him on the feet. No, don't stop him on the feet. Stop him on the ground. What are you doing? This is, you're acting like this dude has good up ground and pound or something. Like this dude could knock you off from his back. He's not going to do that. Take him to the ground. What are you doing, Harry? Prohaska, what are you doing? And of course, the way it's going to work is Pereira is probably still going to beat Harry Prohaska probably later on, like probably fourth round, I think. Because both of them are coming off of a UFC 300 and are late replacements. But the thing is, I do think Harry Prohaska kind of stays... A little bit less of the party life like Pereira. I mean, like Pereira doesn't party, but like, you know what I mean. Like, expensive butter-filled steak. Probably not the best for your diet, but whatever. So, Prohaska, his uh, way to victory, simple. Keep doing the um, absurd um, fight tactics that he always does. Take him to the ground, ground and pound him. And he could cruise to a stoppage win. Once again, you can't do to Pereira what other people did. You can't give him space. You can't give him time. And you can't give him any openings, especially really open ones like bum rushing him. You don't bum rush him. You rush him, but you just don't do it like a bum. But once again, Alex Pereira probably going to stop him fourth round. I think Peraska kind of lasts a lot longer, but no. But then again, Pereira is 36. But once again, he is a very young 36. What he started fighting at like age 20. And don't get me wrong, he has some stoppage losses, but like, who doesn't? Especially in MMA, who doesn't? But like, yeah. Pereira is a very young 36-year-old, so I don't see him slowing down anytime soon. He might slow down at the age of, like, 38. I think that's where he starts, like, severely slowing down. But as of now, I don't think he's slowed down enough for here Brohaska to take advantage of it, but he might make it a little bit more competitive. Okay, enough dilly-dallying. Of course, I got Ian Gary stopping Michael Venom Page in the second round. Brian Ortega, third round twister against Diego Lopez, including a wet willy. And Alex Pereira stopping Harry Prohaska once again, but in the fourth round. Very not nice for Prohaska, but very nice for Alex Pereira. Whether or not he's going to move up to heavyweight, they're like, oh, he's going to move to heavyweight, whatever. He challenged Israel, let Israel Adesanya fight him for the title, fight Uncle Live. I don't know what's next. It really kind of doesn't matter. He's already done enough in the sport not to be maybe, maybe not first round Hall of Fame, but definitely like top 20 of all time, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, hope you enjoy this video and uh, I'll catch you in the next one.